So here I am at the end of the build balancing my batteries. No, you're supposed to do that the other way around. So this video is gonna be about building bus bars. Right here, I am balancing one last pair of batteries because I got impatient putting it together with my B6 AC chargers. I actually have three of these connected to the same pair of batteries. It takes a little while to charge 200 amp hours worth at six amps. Uh, but at least I've got three at six amps. So that's like what, 18 amps? Still gonna take a while. So once that's done, I'll be able to power on the BMS and, and see how things are working. So anyway, in this video, I wanted to show you real quick how to do bus bar. I'm gonna show you what tools you could use that are fairly inexpensive to go ahead and punch your own bus bars. Here we go. Usually when you buy off of Alibaba, AliExpress with these cells, you get bus bars. Apparently my seller forgot to include them, which means I got to run down to the metal supply warehouse and get bus bar. I had to calculate the thickness that I needed. So this here is, rate. This, this should be good for 100 amps, which is uh, perfect for me. My BMSs are gonna max out around there anyway. So I did 100 amp, and this is also just the right thickness that my punch tool can put holes in it instead of having to get out my drill press or using a drill. I figured that'd be a little easier, quieter, don't put my ear buffs on, whatnot. It also makes it pretty easy to cut with this stuff. Now, if you wanted to still be able to use the simple tools and go higher than 100 amps, you could certainly stack these. You could do two of them together to make yourself a 200 amp bus bar. But today we're just gonna go for 100 amps, so I need to take some of this one inch wide stock and start making some bus bars. Let's get to it. I kinda already showed you what I'm gonna be using here. I've got my one inch wide stock. This comes in eight foot lengths, and I've already used a lot of this, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this because it's easier to handle. And my Sharpie, my tin snips, and my punch tool. Um, I grabbed these a long time ago. Actually, I think I, I think I had these. I think these are in a toolbox somewhere from a garage sale. But you can get these tin snips, and you can also get a, a slightly larger version, which might just work a little better. I've got a pair of those kicking around here somewhere that I've been able to find um, from like Home Depot or Lowe's or I'm sure Amazon has those. This I grabbed from Amazon, it's Chinesium, um, but it works fairly well. I just actually oiled it up today to where it actually operates much better. I oiled up in right up in here where it seemed to be binding a lot. Um, and then also down with this plunger. It goes up and down, uh, just so it would stop wearing so much. It, it does punch through this okay, requires a bit of force. So what we're gonna do here is grab our cells and the, the idea here is that this contact patch, um, the bus bar needs to sit on that contact patch. So we're going to do with these M6 bolts that go in here, we're gonna do an M7 hole that gives us, or a seven millimeter hole, right? Which would be an M7. That gives us a little bit of wiggle room um, in case we get the hole just a little bit off that we won't be um, hurting. So what we need to do here, I've got these just lightly clamped together, but actually what I'm gonna do is cut myself some of this, uh, I guess they call fish paper, insulation paper, and put it between each of the cells because that's how I'm going to make it into a battery is I'll have this in between, and then I'll go ahead and lightly clamp it together so that I can get my spacing the way I need it to be. All right, so let's get some of this paper cut off. We just need, this is five inch paper and it fits perfectly with wise these batteries. So we just need it to be as long as the battery. So I'll just set up here and do a snip and then we'll just do all the others the same as this one. I'm not looking for anything that's super perfect. Um, the, the deal with this is this blue plastic is the only thing insulating the bare metal of the battery, which could have a charge on it. If you had these in an application where they rubbed on each other and rubbed through the blue plastic, shrink wrap stuff, then or the cells could short inside the battery. That would not be protected by the BMS. We're gonna do some of this paper just to make sure that doesn't happen. Now you'll notice that earlier I had these set up with all the negatives and all the positives. Really this is the way it should be, right? So if this is the main positive of your battery, 
these two would be connected together, and then these four are going to be connected together, and then these two negatives will then go to the two positives here, and then over again. We're not going to set our bus bar here. I need to make sure that the end of the bus bar here goes to the end of the contact point, maybe just a little further than that. And then we just need to mark where our holes need to be. So now I've got my four locations to punch. Um, the other thing I need to measure is how long this bus bar needs to be. Just gonna be about there. So let's go ahead and cut the bus bar to length and then we'll get it punched. So these 10 snips are, you know, fairly intuitive to use. They're just big scissors, right? No big deal there. These copper pieces do not pop out the other end very well on this tool. So what I do is have a screwdriver or something around uh, to stick up in it and just pop them back out and move on to the next. We should have a bus bar that lines up on all four, which is just about right. There we go. So then we would just screw our bolts in. And then make sure you don't over tighten these. My seller didn't give me a Newton meter reading or anything for how tight to do these bolts. However, these are grade B cells and most of them it looks like the reason they're grade B is they got stripped out and they got helicoils put in. You can see that on here, right? That you got the, the copper color here and you got the silver color inside. That's a helicoil that they put inside the thread to fix the thread. Definitely don't want to be over torquing these. Now when you're doing this, this turned out pretty well. When you're doing um, a 1P battery, these, this copper bar can tend to deform a bit. And even here, you can see you can see where the punch has caused a problem there, right? So really, I should be using this other side with the Sharpie on it, that's the smooth side, and put that down. That'll give me a much better contact patch. If I wanna use this side here, I need to file this down to make sure that ridge isn't the only contact point to the battery. Really, I should be installing it like this. Just fine it's all going to be under the washer regardless um, and i say that because it is copper it's fairly soft and if these terminals could handle quite a bit of torque it would probably just deform it to the correct shape regardless but i'm not going to be over tightening them to the point where that might not happen i want to make sure the copper bar is flat as it's going down it's probably especially important if you're doing a 200 amp bus bar by using two of these on top of each other because then you want to make sure that both sides are nice and flat. You might be able to avoid that by drilling instead of punching. The punching is going to provide a little more stress on the metal. I haven't tried the drilling. Just my thoughts on it. So I'm just going to continue that on. So here I'll do a four position bus bar. Here will just be a two. Um, here will be a four. And then, so that'll be four across. This one will be four across, and then another two. I'll show you the picture once I get all of this done and what it looks like as a full 200 amp hour, 12.8 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. Another tip is once you get one bus bar that you like that has the holes in the right place, instead of just marking holes and then punching, you can actually hold the good bus bar on top of the new one and go ahead and punch right through it which should give you an exact copy of what you want. There we go, exact copy. Whereas this one, 
I did, I just marked holes and then punched. And you can see, I don't know if you can see, but it's just a tad bit off from the original. You can be real careful and get the original just right. You can use it as a template. So something handy if you're doing these copper bus bars, especially in a 2P setup, is that you're gonna have a bus bar on every single positive and negative connection. So you could actually run your BMS lead wires straight to your copper bus bars and solder them on instead of using ring terminals. Now, these bus bars, by definition, are going to be very thermally conductive uh, because they're electrically conductive. It kind of goes hand in hand. I have a 175 watt soldering iron here and it still takes a bit to get this bus bar hot enough to take solder, but it'll get there. And usually I need to get some flux down there. I've got some dedicated flux sitting around somewhere and that would help a lot, I think, is to pre-flux the copper bus bar. Um, but obviously there's flux in my uh, solder here. So I use that. Okay, there we go. So I'm flowing a bit. And then I'll just grab my lead, which is pretend. And, oh, that cooled off really quick. I'm gonna get that in there. And there we have it. Now my lead is on the bus bar. And there we go, got some solder flow. There we have it. As you can see, we've got our five bus bars here, which if we were doing a one in parallel battery, we'd only need three bus bars, which is kind of handy to have to only use three. There we go, nice shiny copper. And uh, here's the rest of the battery. I know my Dally BMS there is kind of hanging off the side because it'll sit <clears throat> right up here on top. Um, got my nice little terminals out front. Should be a good little battery.